question I've selected to answer today is about spirit guides. What are they? How do you communicate with them? And what basic types are they? So when we're talking about a spirit guide, what we're talking about is an incorporeal being, which is gaining its personal expansion from the intention that they have, which is to assist in and learn from the life experience of another being's physicality. From their more objective standpoint, their perception about what you are going through in your life is different. So what they are coming to in terms of the new idea is different based on watching you in your life. So it's a mutual symbiosis. It's an invitation and an acceptance. It's a misunderstanding that spirit guides stand in this place of perfection which you have to catch up to. What's going on is this this thing where even they, not in a physical body, are going through a process of expansion through their intention of helping you. The same way that your expansion is being fulfilled through living this one physical life that you have going. Some guides are with you for your entire life, others come and go. The guide that you are experiencing and the guides that you have with you right now are a match to your energetic vibration. It, they are a mutually agreed upon uh, relationship when you set up your original intention for life. So when we're talking about a spirit guide who has been with you since the very beginning, what happens is, is you set an original intention for coming into a life. So let's say your original intention is, I would like to experience what it is to go into a place of poverty. I would like to see what it is that that experience would cause within me, what new idea I would be inspired to. The vibration of that intention then attracts entities who's, who have a, a mutually, similarly vibrating uh, intention, but who are, who are not wanting to come into a physical experience in order to gain that sort of expansion. So they say, all right, it's mutually beneficial for me to stay with you energetically throughout your physical life so that I can learn from your experience and from helping you to stay in line with your original intention. So now we can talk about the basic types of guides. There are five basic types of spirit guide. The first is what we would refer to as a light body. You've heard, I'm sure, some people call these ascended masters or angels. They have an incredibly high vibratory rate, so when you perceive them, quite often you perceive them as pure light. Um, most often these ascended masters or, or um, light bodies will come in as a match to people whose life intention either involves reaching higher spiritual planes or whose life work involves working with higher spiritual planes like healers or teachers. Um, they tend to help multiple physical beings at one time, so instead of just really hone their focus in on one person, they tend to help a group of beings because they're obviously on such a high dimensional plane, usually the 11th and 7th to 11th plane. That means that they are not limited by space and time and they are able to travel through all dimensions in the entire universe and all universes as if they were a single point. The second type of guide are the ones that you're probably the most familiar with. We call them archetypal guides. They are symbolic or representative of something else. So these are the ones who tend to reactivate identities from previous lives. For example, you might find that your guide appears to you in a way in which you knew them in a previous life, or in a way in which you would relate to them, like the warrior, or an archetypal image like uh, the healer, something like that. They have appeared to you for a purpose. Typically that purpose is to teach you and guide you along the particular path that your intentions have set out for you. Those intentions can always be changed, and when those intentions change and your vibrations shift, then you can be a match to a whole new type of guide, which is why sometimes when you see people really ascend and really ascend and continue on this path towards spirituality where they keep becoming more and more, um, when they go through a huge shift, you can see a whole new set of guides come in and replace the old set. So, as always, these archetypal guides are a match to your intentions. So when I'm talking about a reactivated vibration, what I'm talking about is every thought that's ever been thought exists. And so the thought of the identity that they had in a past life 
can be reactivated by source energy for your own understanding in this life, which is why they come as an archetypal thing, which would have symbolic meaning to you. All right, the third type that we're talking about is what we call an, um, an ancestral guide. So an ancestral guide are those who knew us or related to us through our physical lineage in this life. So that's when, when you have this type of a guide, it's the kind of thing where your grandfather or grandmother or great-grandmother or brother, somebody who has passed on that you knew or were related to in this life, is now helping you and guiding you through this life. The fourth kind is an animal guide. Sometimes this can be a deceased animal which you knew in your physical life, but most often these, these animal guides are what the Native Americans might call a totem. What that is is that your vibratory rate matches the vibratory rate of that animal. And so the Hopi, for example, believed that in shape-shifting, what you were doing was taking on the vibratory expression of that particular animal which you relate to. So they believe that while you have many totems, you have one spirit animal, which would be what you became if you learned how to shapeshift. And then this takes us to our number one spiritual guide. This is the most important spiritual guide you'll have in your life, and that's your higher self. That is the energy that is your eternal self, which is projecting itself through this physical body. That is a spirit guide. It's just a spirit guide which you are the expression of. As for what spirit guides can do in your life, it's a fairly unlimited list, but to name a few things, they can help you to arrange synchronicities, that which you call signs in your life. They can help intensify intuitions, they can help project f flashes of intuition, they can help intensify encounters and people and opportunities, they can offer healing and help if it's invited. They can keep you going in the direction of your joy and your intentions and your desires. The thing about guides is they will not interfere with free will. Because every thought that has ever been thought exists, um, it's very important to explain to you exactly what a thought that thinks is. When your source self thinks the thought that is you, you now become such a strong point of focus that you now have the energy to think. So you, in your physical life, are a thought which thinks. <laughs> when you're a thought that thinks, you now have free will. The free will which you have is the free will of focus. And so guides will not interfere with your focus. They may be able to influence, but unless they are invited, they will not create things in your physical life. So it's very important that you make it part of your free will and ask them in if you're wanting to experience them. Now we can talk about how to communicate with your spirit guides. When you think a thought, it creates energy. That energy can be received and understood by guides, angels, higher selves, God, anything that is consciousness. It is only in your physical life that you experience thinking as separate from communication. So they will respond energetically the same way they received your communication, which you are broadcasting through thought, that is the same way that they will respond. So if you are not able to tune into that frequency, kind of like a radio dial would tune into a frequency, you won't hear their message and you won't experience them. So. Communicating with spirit guides is all about raising your frequency to the range where you can perceive them. Step one is set the intention. As we all know, intentions are a very, very intense form of energy. When you set the intention to talk to and experience your spirit guides, it must come to you if you line up with it. You also must realize that their communication will come through the most open venue that you have. This is where we have to get into the conversation about multiple ways of perceiving. Not everyone perceives what you'd call beyond the senses information in the same way. You have clairvoyance, clairaudience, you have physical intuition, you have spiritual intuition. Basically we can sum this up in four types. 
So there are four basic types of receiving knowledge that is beyond the veil, beyond the physical dimension. That is, you have some people that are, that are clairvoyant, mental intuitives, meaning they receive the pictures. Um, clairaudience, funny enough, falls into this category. Second, you have physical intuitives, which will perceive things through their physical senses. So they're the kind of people who would walk into a room and they would start getting sweaty palms before they would start feeling something or seeing something. They physically intuit what they are around. Then you have your emotional intuitives. That's the fourth type. They are the real am empaths. They're the ones who will walk into a room and immediately take on the sensations and they will perceive the information coming to them from beyond the physical through their emotional centers, their heart chakra. And then you have the spiritual intuitives. We call them spiritual intuitives because this type of knowledge is perceived as just knowing. They're the kind of people who, without an explanation, without a feeling, without a sensation, they just know. That's spiritual intuition. So your guides will talk to you through your most open type. And once you keep focusing on that, then once enough information is pouring through that, that it more must be satisfied, it will come through the other venues, which is how you start opening and opening and opening and opening your, your um, intuitive abilities, is you focus in first on what your inherent capability is. So you would like to, I think one of the best ways is to do a meditation or do a ritual. Rituals often help people's brains to line up with what their consciousness is doing so that the brain isn't constantly interfering with resistant thoughts. Things like, well, you're just hearing things. That's just in your head. You're just creating things and making them up. So when you're doing this meditation, what you want to do is try to find the space that is between thoughts. You want to find that stillness. So that means sitting down and watching your breath. Every time your mind wanders, just bring it back to the breath with no judgment. You want to look for and look to expand that space between thoughts, which is that stillness and that complete objectivity. Once you've found that gap, you can project this feeling of, potentially people use light, like a bubble of light around you. You want to make the frequency around you a, a space of complete safety and a space of perception. So there's nothing else that enters the space except for what you invite there. Once you feel like you have this space of stillness, you can ask your guides to begin identifying themselves to you in order of importance. They can arrange themselves that way. That means that most likely you are most, what I would call a principal guide, which is the guide which is the most active in terms of influence in your life, will come through first. So you can ask them to identify themselves to you. So you may get a name popping up in your head. That's totally fine if you do. Most people don't get this the first time that they try this experiment, but um, let's say that you get a sensation then. You might have the sensation of, of hot or cold somewhere in your body. What you need to do is memorize that sensation because that sensation is going to be the sort of signature for that particular guide. And then you can ask them to switch and run through the whole cycle until you get a feeling of completion. You can ask, is it done? And you'll get this intuition, yes or no. So you want to run through this process until you have all the sensations that are identified with your spirit guides memorized. If you're looking for names or images um, and you can ask and want to ask for them, you can put yourself into a state of pure receptivity. That means no judgment, no creation energy. It is a mental space of pure objective observation. Sometimes when people are doing this, I like to imagine like a black slate like space and then where the images and the knowledge can then play itself on that like a backdrop. This information coming from your spirit guides will be conveyed to you in the way you understand it best. They will use symbology which you relate to. For example, I counseled one person on how to um, communicate with spirit guides and what she found quite very quickly it was the fact that when she would ask them for their names, what she was seeing was an image of a chalkboard with the names being written out with chalk across the chalkboards. 
So there really is no one venue which this information is going to present itself to you. That's why you have to be in a state of objectivity so you can receive it however it will come to you. Another way to go about communicating with spirit guides is to use um, automatic writing. So this is a really good thing to do if you're one of those people whose left brain tends to inf interfere in your life. You can take out a pen and paper and write down some questions to your guide and then without any judgment in your mind, without any expectation, you can start to write the answers you feel, see, or hear. And if it's not working with the hand you usually write with, switch it to the hand you don't write with because your neural pathways are set up so that your life and your reality, the construct of it, is attached to the hand you usually convey that truth and that perspective through. So when you switch hands, that neuro circuit no longer works and no longer applies anymore, so it's a lot easier for this kind of information to make its way through. So put it in your left hand, if you're right-handed, and write down what answers you're getting. Totally free form. No judgment and no rationalization. You can look back over it afterwards if you want to. Another way is to start experimenting with out-of-body experience and lucid dreaming. Most of you who have listened to me talk know that I am a real advocate for learning out-of-body experience. Because you will encounter them very quickly during this particular method. <laughs> I, it's not even the kind of thing where I have to help you to find them once you go out of body. They will pop up for you. Quite often when you get out of the third dimension, the fourth dimension, you'll feel this presence either behind you or on your peripheral usually if not right in front of you. And if you turn around, then you will experience your, usually your primary guide first. So I think that's all I had to say today about spirit guides. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask me. It's very rewarding to realize just how alone you aren't. If you invite their influence into your space, all of your intentions can come to you with much more ease because you have just invited energies other than your own to participate in your creation. So keep at it. They say that practice makes perfect, and I would agree. This is because every time you practice something, you're strengthening the vibration. And any time you focus on something and that vibration intensifies, it is close to becoming physical. And it will become physical eventually, and you will experience that intention through a physical manifestation. Something that you can tangibly experience in your physical life, such as a feeling or seeing or a hearing of these spirit guides. So keep at it.